Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Nelson here. And if you own the Skydio 2, or if you're waiting for your order, or even if you plan on getting one, today should be an exciting day for you for a couple of reasons. First one is that Skydio has finally resumed operation and started processing orders again. And then the second one is Skydio also has put out what I would say is a major update for their drone. And so today, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to try and look at each of the item on the release notes for the newest firmware version. And we're going to try and see how good these uh, updates really are. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Part of the highlights for this firmware update is the ability to use your carrying case as a rather landing pad where the drone should be able to track the logo and land on it precisely as it goes down below uh, 10 feet. So yeah, let's uh, try and test that thing out. So first I'm gonna take off. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up to about 30 feet. And then I'm gonna try and land a drone. So I'm gonna go down. Tilt my camera down. That is absolutely amazing. Would you look at that? It lands right in the middle of the landing case or the carrying case. Oh wow, that is really, really good. I wasn't expecting it to be like that. Okay, so really quickly, let me try and uh, land using the beacon. If it would still be able to use the carrying case as a landing pad. Okay, I'm gonna launch it. Okay, so that's now the Skydio. And then I'm gonna land it using the beacon and see if it would still be able to track the landing pad and use it uh, to land. So you see it's landing. And then, yep. That's bingo. Now the second one also has something to do with landing and before, you know, when you're trying to land and once you initiate landing, there's no way that you can move your drone to make some minor adjustment, you know, as far as where do you want your drone to land exactly. And for this firmware update, they're saying that you should be able to nudge, you know, make some adjustments as far as like your yaw, your pitch or your roll. and so yeah, let's go ahead and look at that. So first of all, I'm going to take off, but instead of using the carrying case as a landing pad, I'm gonna take it off and then just land. And while landing, I'm gonna move my drone to where I exactly want it to go. See, I'm gonna press land right now. And while it's doing that, okay. Okay, now I'm trying to prevent it from landing. So you can see it really does. Changes. Oh, I'm still making adjustments. 
I'm gonna bring it lower. So you can see, and then backward, and then forward. Then move it to the right. And this is all while landing, lower it down some more, and then finally land. Well, that works. Included in the update is the addition of uh, new skills in the beacon. If you remember in the past, there were only three that's inside the beacon, and that was the steering mode, active track, and fixed track mode. And so yeah, let me go ahead and take off and see if the hover and another skill, which is the orbit, is now included. This addition, of course, is very much welcome, at least for me, because then I would not have to uh, go and use my phone if I want to use the orbit or the hover mode. So now the drone is gonna take off. So it's up in the air. And so, yeah, that's motion tracking, let's see. That's fixed track. That's orbit. That's hover. And that's steering mode. So yeah, there are indeed now five new skills in uh, inside the beacon. And again, you have the steering mode. You have the hover, you have the orbit, you have the fixed track, and then you have the motion track. And now they're also saying that the distance as far as the drone can track it if you're using the beacon should be extended. Now that's a drone tracking me at the closest distance. And I can confirm that it really has now extended as far as the range. So let me have it like go as far as it could. So yeah. Oh, that is really far, which is really good. As you can see, it is now so far away that I can barely see it with my camera. And I don't think that's the farthest either. Oh yeah, so now that's, a, the, that's the farthest as it is showing here on the beacon. Okay, so yeah, so changing the range on the beacon as far as the distance, let me show you this. It looks like you now have four options. That's the closest. Again, let me show you that. Gonna go farther, and then I think this is the farthest. There you go. So now, what I'm gonna try to do is to uh, test the orbit mode using the beacon. So I'm gonna take off right now. Okay, now it's turning around, waiting for it to confirm that. Okay, so now it says it's tracking from the right. Just the distance. And it looks like that's the farthest. It's going farther and further. Oh, that's really far. But now I'm gonna bring it closer. Oops, it's about to hit the tree. Okay, it's really good how it's, it's able to adjust it. And then now you can also change the speed. So right now I have it at like one mile per second.
I really like that. That's really good. Now let me change to hover. So yeah, so right now it's just hovering there. It's still tracking me, of course. So really good for, you know, when you wanna use it to uh, reveal your locations. And it's still doing that. As you can see, it's still pointed at me. Now I'm gonna change the distance. So that's the hover mode. Works really well. I like it. Now I'm gonna be using this feature a lot. For okay, now let me change it to steering mode. Then I'm gonna try and use the carrying case to land again. Maybe right there. Move forward a little bit. Let's see if I can use. So I'm hitting land right now. It looks like it has spotted the carrying case, making some adjustments. Boom, right in the middle. That's really awesome. I really like it. I'm so happy with this update. And I'll be taking it out actually in, you know, one of my trail running up in the mountains. And I can't wait to test the orbit mode or the hover. And then, you know, instead of probably hand catching my drone, I'll try to be using this uh, feature where it would land on the case instead. The other thing that they are kind of highlighting for this update is now the ability to use the dual battery charger to charge not only just the, the battery but other devices as well such as the, the beacon or the controller by using the other USB-C port. And along with that, if you have a battery on the dual battery charger you can now use that as a power source to charge some of your devices. So all you have to do is to turn on the battery just like so. And then once it is on, it should be able now to charge the, the beacon as you can see with this one. Those are the main highlights for this firmware update. However, they have also included some minor improvements such as the addition of uh, different flight modes when using your phone as a controller or the controller itself. Such as here, using your phone, you now have mode one and mode three added to your mode two, which is the default one. And if you go to controller, same with the phone, you also have mode one and mode three. You also now have the ability to be able to uh, view and download some of your footage without having to disconnect your controller unlike in the past. As you can see, I'm now able to see all my uh, flights from my previous outings and I don't have to disconnect my controller. Anyway, if you're interested with the rest of the improvements for this update, I will include them and put them up right now on the screen. That is all I have for you guys and if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I could. And finally, I will see you on the next one.